Father, we just thank you for our brother, God Almighty. We ask you, God Almighty, that have now be the pain for the regular return, God Almighty, God Almighty. That how she opens her mouth, God Almighty, God Let your fire, let it, let it fall upon her words, God Almighty. It will not be her words, it will be your words. As we open to receive, oh God Almighty, the what you would have us say to us. We receive her as we receive her.
we are going to start a little more and we start a little step by right? mm -hmm. We are going to start mm -hmm. instead of talking about water, drinking an altar, but water can exercise that is taking a personal prayer altar is the mother of water or altar. If it's the um, this is an altar to start with. This is the church altar. We will go from your altar, we will go with the people of the altar, we will go, um, we will be just in the family to say that you, everything we do springs from a personal altar. Otherwise, anything you don't have that, it will be, it will, it will, it will be from your own restraint from your land's money if you don't spend time with the God. But what this means is a personal prayer altar is not something separate from the prayer we do, but we need. If you pray for like an hour, you need at least a few minutes to spend time with the Lord, to commune with the Holy Spirit, to take guidance, to take to your way. So that's why I, I, I call it Mother of all altars. So, what um, uh, I felt the Holy Spirit would communicate straight to, I had a, a, a surrender in heart. If somebody spends the time on the and the altar, the personal altar, you're going to be changed. You're going to be transformed. And then it becomes important. So you don't need anybody to teach you all the things we say, or you pray, what time do I need to pray? What time do, when should I pray? When should I build my altar? Who's been given the Holy Spirit? In John um, chapter 16, verse 13, chapter 8 to 15. I'll tell you when the number came up for so it was a thing so that we don't show. I mean, the 16th, I think, the 15th, the same, I'll tell you very well for the Holy Spirit. How do you explain to me the experience of the Holy Spirit? He will guide you to the power of truth. But he shall not be for pastor. So whatsoever, whatsoever he that is, that child he speaks, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of me mine, and shall show me from to you. 15. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore said thy that he shall take of mine and show it from to you. Thank you. So we have the Holy Spirit to teach us, to guide us. Okay, we have to tell at the same time the Bible says we are giving to God, giving constantly giving all the people to help us out. But if you have a personal prayer book, you can learn. The Holy Spirit is there, always in trust in the pointing to students who never find out. So when we look at the human um, and surrender lives, I want to Paul. Paul is a person who you can see how he transformed from. <laughs> This is your kingdom where we see him, you know, but we didn't be judged. And we see him when he had an encounter with, with Jesus. He was a changed man. He said, What do you want to do? And from that, um, that encounter, he moved on. We see him laying down more things. Oh, before we go to that, when before he came to what they converted, he did something for my which he thinks for a billion five billions. Chapter 3, verse 5. Um, I don't know what they are going to say. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, which in other ages was not made unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles, chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 23. Yeah, that's what I'm reading. Yes, but five to eight. Yeah. 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 of the Yeah. 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 the tribe of Benjamin and people of the Hebrews as touching the law of the concerning zeal, executing the Yeah. touching the righteousness which is in the law, Yeah. 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 Y
sorry, so that was 44.5, which was so proud of. And, oh, sorry. And that, that's where we are. Those are the things which form our identities. Different from Paul, because Paul was a fancy, you don't know if you think about it. Yeah, our identity, our mindset, our values, our titles, our job titles, social titles, you name it, all those titles. We were some snack band, some can say, no, that's it, this one, no, that I stand. So all the titles you hold, those are the things that form our identity. And those are the things that hinder us from something to go sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that those are the things God wants to deal with in our hearts in order to be able to live a life that is surrendered and build it for him to be able to work in us, for him to be able to direct us to do it. Why do we know the direction of some of that? And for us to get to know his ways. So from that profile, when Paul was had an encounter with Jesus, he let him start going on the road that he was. He, he longed to know his way. He longed to submit. He was no longer the Pharisee, the teacher of the world, everything he was. And when you look at Philippians, uh, sorry, Philippians 3, 7, 10, Paul really was laying down his life. Um, he, he says that the things which he found in dream, seven to ten, yeah, said the things, but what they were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. He exalted, and I count all things but loss. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And you count them but that I may be Christ. Is that the is that the things that says that? Yeah, so can, can you imagine everything he counted precious, but who he put to the point where he put it down? And the other other uh, uh, versions call it um lost um rubbish. But uh, yeah, that, that is really good. So um that should be our goal. That should be our desire, just to know him, to lay down everything, to count everything, to count it for him. To count it as Lord, or to know Christ and his resurrection power. So after after that one, then we see then he's trans, trans, transitioning from transformation to death. When we get to we later see in the call that's the uh, walking dead. In Galatians states, Galatians 220, how will you find it So now the Roman just transformation is dying. And then we made it dying instead of living the life that is no longer is in this situation. Yeah, you see. Yes. I've been crucified with Christ is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Paul, from a bunch of Paul who was persecuting the child, is now dead. And um, we see him again in um, Philippians 1, verse 31. He's, he's really what he's saying for me to live. Is Christ. According to my heaven's reputation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that in all holiness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. <laughs> For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Can anybody in this room say the same? Is anybody ready to go? But Paul go to that point where I think that his life was, was no longer his. And that's where we also need to be. That's where we need to be. That's where if you spend time on a personal altar of prayer, that's the journey, the same journey we be working on, the same as Paul. Um, and um, if, if your behavior is predictable, if people can predict your behavior, and say, oh, you know, you know, my great. Uh, if you say this and that, she, 
this function here. And also, you might have had children, or the only children, or if you know yourself when you're growing up, when you're growing up, when you may say, Oh, my daddy will kill me, my mom will kill me, if she knows this, if she hears about this. And they said, they start saying this maybe at eight, at 16, they are still saying the same thing. 20, they are still saying the same thing about their father, they are both the mother. 30, they are still saying the same thing. That, that, that means they say, a, something missing there because there is no transformation, there is no change, you're still the same person. Unless you people can predict your behavior, which is positive, that's good. We need to be, um, we need to be, people need to be talking about us like, how do you recognize some these days? Because this is, he never used to smile, but now if it's when you find you meet him, he's never smiling, he's shaking your hands. But if it's that, uh, if people think, so, so probably really think about it. Still never want to say to you. This year and next year, they will have a problem. Then there are areas that are not surrendered uh, to the work of God. Um so then we um this thing what the other is to be. So what God wants is our hearts. He alters over personal prayer body. We call it an individual God. As the uh, Roman strong says, we are called to be we are called to be living sacrifices. Holy and accepted. So as a living sacrifice, what I find is valid if we are living sacrifices. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your own reasonable service. So, when it's uh, when you're building our pastor of God, what is the water? What are we building? What are we building? What are we trying to do? Actually, you can call this um, the doxology, but the theology might tell you about when I look at the, the, the scriptures. Our altar is supposed to be at the seat of Jesus. We are surrender, we are submit, we are dying to self, to ourselves. And then it is the hearts that God wants to deal with. The hearts in um in um in Jeremiah 17, I think it's chapter 16. No, Jeremiah 17, chapter 9, but chapter 17, chapter 9 is okay. I'll read for 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 chapter five. He says they have been taking the day for a while walking, and it takes it to a while, and it will pass the day. What are the key? Who can do it? Who can do it? Who can completely understand? All the ability with his own heart and mind. The Lord such the mind. I try. I the Lord so. I the Lord such the mind. I try the heart. Even to give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his ways. Mm -hmm. So, God, that is the heart. There is, there is a, a lot of our hearts. And we can't, when, when we start worshiping God and we put all the flags to pray, when the heart is full of God, I, I don't know if anybody has um, a, a shed and you might start thinking of the things you have in the shed. And with all the things in the shed, you find somebody. You you are you keep adding on everything, you keep adding on things, you don't empty the shed to put in something new. So we be God, He wants when we pray and invite him where we are, we are writing it's like we're writing him to that shed, which is full of junk. And there's no room for him, there's no space for him. We pray and say we make room for him. But actually, what that means. Is that we've got time. It's, a, it's about availability, not room in our hearts. It's like, okay, I'm here, Lord, uh, make room for you 30 minutes to go before your next TV program, favorite program. And the Holy Spirit is like, okay, is this why I want you to come? So, but God is calling us to go up. We need to go to where He is, not to call Him where we are. I'm going to tell you a short story of, um, I went to visit a friend who invited me very 
very nice person. And um, I got to the home and I was shown my mom. But um, the, the state of the mom told me that the, the friend, I mean, she didn't, she didn't make any adjustments, any room for me. It was that she invited me in her room, in her lifestyle, in her home. And I'm not saying she's a very, very nice person. But I felt like, should I make room for myself to move a few things and things? But I thought, you know, I don't want to fit in my house. So I, I, I thought, I'm a bit, let me just leave it. So I, I tried to fit in that room to see where I could put my belongings and her. But most of it was not possible. And this is how we treat the Holy Spirit. When we don't make any other adjustments, when we don't try to look into our hearts and see that this needs to go, this needs to go, so that the Holy Spirit can come in and take his place. When we, <laughs> it is like we, when we, we wash it where we are, it's like we're inviting the Holy Spirit to say, come and bless my life, come and bless what I have here. Um, this is where I live. Um, but we need to go to where he is. And when you go to where he is, and for me, uh, that's where Revelation um, chapter 4, where uh, the throne, that's where the throne is. For me, that's the, the altar where we have to go and let our hearts down and let them burn. Because um, in Revelation, it's a long chapter. But when I was reading, when I read it, I love that chapter in, 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 the, in, the, in the Bible. It's, um, they are, the, 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 the throne, around the throne, they are thundering signs and um, lightning signs. The, the, the seven lamps of the Holy Spirit that the fire is burning. And that fire, for me, and the presence of God, because when you, you, you have to do it, when there is burning, I forgot to, to say the, the, the law of things in Leviticus. Um, I had that scripture, I don't know if I have it here, in Leviticus, we say, uh, uh, but it says Leviticus, uh, verse 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 4, verse 8. It says, the fire on the altar shall be kept burning, on it it shall not be put out. And the priest the burn the wall of it is the morning, and let the battle of the Lord on it. And he shall burn on it the parts of the battle of the of the disobedient. Of so a fire shall always be burning in the world, or not, he shall never go out. We don't have that what it takes to keep the fire burning. It is the Holy Spirit, it is the presence of God. And the presence of God, it can't be in this heart which is the with all the things that we don't do with. We won't. So the, the, it's like we are sacrifices which are never burning. But we have, when you move at all the stage, all the all the testament, any sacrifice, any of the power of God will be burnt for you. But for, for us, we are still so alive that we like come to the altar and we don't come to the altar, we will never burn it because the things in our hearts are not being dealt with. So, in the presence of God, when you look at the throne or, or uh, the throne, throne where Daniel, the saints, the elders, they, they all come and worship. And in the presence of God, you can't, you, you cannot be in the presence of God and have all that jump in the heart. But because we don't go in, we don't go in, we just, we, we do all these things, it's easy to, to take a fast. Because it doesn't deal with your heart, it's easy to start praying. You know, intercessor. We are mighty intercessor. Call to the intercessor. We pray for others, but no, look into our hearts, and that is what God is wanting to do. And tonight, God is wanting to for somebody to say, "I am coming." I, I think we need to kind of try and stop calling God to say, "Come, Lord, come, Lord, you will come." It's like I'm coming. We, we need to go to where he is. His presence will, uh, it will define with others. His presence with others will bless us, will take away, away all that, all the things we hold on to. When, when you look at, even uh, when you have an encounter with God, when you look at the people who are not after God, you look at um, people like Isaiah. Isaiah had an encounter. The Bible says that. 
He was in the year he was said that that is so long. For me, I that tells me there were things that were preventing myself from seeing the Lord. Whatever it was, the Bible doesn't say, and I don't want to speak this, but there were things. So when things are put out of the way, I said to see the Lord. And I said that that's chapter six from chapter one, five. I say I was already a prophet. I say opens up with the vision of Isaiah high. The book of Isaiah opens up with the vision of Isaiah high. He was prophesying. Chapter six, he has an encounter with God. And when he did, he was like, one to be a man land. He, his, his heart was exposed. He couldn't find it any longer. He was exposed and he was recommissioned. That's when he qualified to be a prophet and to prophesy. And when he he was born and released to prophesy, he was sent to a to the people at the uh, it is from the Athens chapter um, verse where he says um, to, to go to the people who is the land of the Lord. Um, I think it's from the So, so we, we are that learning, but we don't learning. Mm -hmm. We sit under the work, we sit under the teachings, and we hear these teachings every day. Let me go take it there. Like, mm -hmm. the, our, 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 our prayer, prayer tonight, our meeting tonight is ordered. We come and we say, Oh, we come to, to some service, we say, Service one, very good. But when you ask somebody what was good about the science, somebody will continue saying he was good. And it's like, okay. And it's like, it, it's different than usual. Every day, every time, our lives not being transformed, not being changed, not being submitted to the Holy Spirit. So, um, what God is looking for, another example uh, of, another example of, <laughs> so, another example is because of the hard crisis in Zachariah in his chapter 3. He also had the hard crisis. But when he had the decision, he was also having to go back to the land. So, whatever things we think in that place are um, is um, somewhere, it's because we, we need to start looking at our hearts and see what's in the heart. You look at the disciples. Um, then when Jesus went to went with them to, to pray, he went to wake him up, he was sleeping. Yes. When he wake him up again, he was sleeping. Numbering disciples. You find them, or you meet them again in a uh, where they are uh, not you know, uh, you know, where they are fighting for positions. We we spread we spread to be great love around us. When when they had when the day of the first came, they were transformed. They they sought all the you know, all their positions, brought some this for everything to share the whole thing in the themselves, and they were ready to be battered. The disciples were sleeping. They were ready to lay down their lives. They didn't care, and they all died as as much as. So we, we, what we need to do is no more teaching, no more learning, no more hearing, but see, yielding to the Holy Spirit, submitting to the Holy Spirit, and praying for our encounter. The teachings, the Holy Spirit will teach us. He will guide us in all truth. We need to seek to know his ways. 
and change will come effortlessly. Effortlessly, you don't have to want to. But if we don't, if we pray for change and want whatever we want to pray for outside of His presence, we are never going to be the same. There is no fire to burn those things in our hearts. There is no presence to transform. So that is why we want for you, for us, for today. But, uh, but uh, all, all that you think that have want, they just they want to do that they do not. They they want in if they hear in in a thirty to forty five half day half a week they teach them. But yeah, I mean the whole thing teach. Um, authors teach what they say you teach, but the Holy Spirit is saying it's not about language, it's not about what we know, it's about what we have in our hearts. Mm -hmm. I had another example of you know, um, Rebecca, Rebecca when he was playing um, from Lebanon, and um, Rebecca was he told his father, she told her father, God. And when we came to pay for the gold, she sat on the gold. I don't know how much they were all of them tried. But she sat there and she started telling her father all the people that he loved sitting here and all of this and that. And though that makes me to give the Holy Spirit, you're sitting on the ball that is always waiting to fall off, but you're not dealing with it. And you pay the paint the high price because she ended up. As a result, but also it took a, a few steps, but, but, but that's what happened. So I just want to, I just pray that people, a, a prayer, a personal prayer altar is not a physical place. It's not a, you know, some people have prayer altars in their, all into their rooms. Not everybody is privileged to have that in space in their homes. Some homes are shared. And when you look at the um, Jesus like prayer, he prayed in different places, but all he did was it was the time he prayed, which was quiet, he was obviously hope that he needed to make sure that he was his prayer at the time when people are going to pray for him and in places where they prayed, he was um, quiet. So what you need is a quiet place. If you have a prayer altar. In the home, when you go on holiday, what happens? When you have to ask, what happens? The Bible tells us to pray without sitting. When you look at Jesus Christ again, he was never committing to the Holy Spirit, not even Father. And we have the Holy Spirit to pray to fellowship with him. We need to be the way, one of the ways that we deliver, one of the ways we can. Um, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, communion with the Holy Spirit, is being invite Him in everything you want to do, be it an email at work. Before you say, I'm going to give him a piece of mind, ask the Holy Spirit, how can I respond to this leader? And when you do the Holy Spirit, for example, if you are meeting, um, ask the Holy Spirit, come to me, go to me, go to me, from when you come out, just say, Holy Spirit, you did it. I thought she was going to shout, but she didn't. So that is really beautiful. And in a way, it's praying. You see, you see prayer like you need to say it. You have to be on your knees, raise your hands. But for the case, when you want Jesus, you are going to pray. You pray for four, four words, like prayer, some of them were sure that four words, then some of them were half day, three times a day, all night. So the, 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 it doesn't, you, you don't need to say, how long do I pray for? What should I pray for? Once you sit at the feet of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will take you. And I can't say, can you guys do what No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell one of the very good songs of the prayer altar where Jesus prayed in the room. Okay, can I finish this? In Luke, um, Luke. Nine, I believe, where Jesus was when Jesus was given, he, he the, 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 when, when you have to pray out, there is transformation, his faith was altered, and they, they, then the Elijah and Moses came and spoke with him, 
And so that for us, if the Holy Spirit, when you are the prayer altar, the Holy Spirit will come and speak to you about God's will. His, his will was were, were, were spoken by the line that was talking about how he was going to die. That was his will. But at the same time, they revealed God's heart, which he will open his heart. He, they said he was going to die, but they slept in the place in Israel. So you can pray God's will and miss God's heart. Mm. Because he can say, he can say, God, you say, you suffer your mind, and God, you I need a job. And he gives you a job. But his, that's his will. But his heart, he say, Manchester, should it be Manchester? Should it be Eden? Should it be Babylon? So we need to be at the feet of Jesus. We wait for the Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us and give us in each way. Thank you so much. I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. That you will be able to give you the name and give you the name of Amen. Amen. Amen.